What exactly is the meaning of belief in Al Qadr? As far as belief in Qadr is concerned, it is one of the pillars of Iman, that believing in Qadr. And there are four points that are to be noted in the belief of Qadr. Number one, that Allah knows everything. Allah has knowledge of everything, the past, the present and the future. He has knowledge of things which are general as well as specific. He has knowledge from eternity to eternity. So Allah is the one who knows everything. He has ilm gap. Point number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written this in the law him hafuz, in a tablet preserved. And both these points of belief of Qadr is mentioned in Surah Hajj, chapter number 22, verse number 70, that knowest not thou that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything in the heavens and the earth and indeed it is kept in his record and for Allah it is easy that means number one that Allah knows everything and number two it's kept in his record it's mentioned in Surah Hajj chapter 22 verse number 70 it's mentioned in Sayyid Muslim volume number four in the book of Qadr hadith number 6416 that the messenger of Allah said that Allah ordained the measure of the creation of the universe 50,000 years before the heavens and the earth were created. It's further mentioned in Sunan Abu Dawud, volume number three, hadith number 4683, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first created the pen and said to it, write. The pen replied, O oh Lord, what should I write? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote the decree, the qadr of all the things till the beginning of the hour, till the beginning of the day of judgment. These are the first two points. The third point of Qadr is that everything happens with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything. As Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Qasas, chapter number 28, verse number 68, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates and chooses as he wills. It's mentioned in Surah Ibrahim, chapter number 14, verse number 27, that Allah does whatever he wills. And it's also mentioned in Surah Buruj, chapter number 85, verse number 16, Allah is the doer of all he intends. So here we come to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever he intends, he can do. Whatever he wants, he can do. And further, it's mentioned in Surah Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 6, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shapes you in the womb as he pleases. It's mentioned in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 90, that if Allah willed, he would have given power to them and they would have fought you. It's mentioned in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 112. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if Allah willed, they would not have done it. The fourth point in the belief of Qadr is that all things that happen are created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the essence, in the attribute and in the movement. As Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Zumur, chapter number 39, verse number 62, that Allah is the creator of everything and he is the guardian and disposer of all affairs. It's further mentioned in Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 2, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth in due proportion. It's mentioned in Surah Safat, chapter number 37, verse number 96, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you and your handiwork. And further, just because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the person who has created everything that happens, that does not mean that it interferes with the free will. We yet have our free will, and there are many verses in the Quran and Hadith we talk about that, that we have our free will, and the Sharia says that, and we know in our day to day life that we have a free will. Allah further says in the Quran in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 223, talking about approaching the spouses, that you can approach your tilt the way you like and when you like it. That means you have a free will. It's further mentioned in Surah Taghabun, chapter number 64, verse number 16, that fear Allah as much as you can. Listen to him and obey him. And it's mentioned in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 286, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not lay a burden greater than a person can bear. And he earns every good that he does. And he suffers every evil that he earns. So based on this, 
every human being has a free will and we see that in day to day life. For example, there are certain things which are governed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has fixed certain things about death, about life. Everything else Allah has given a free will. If I want I can lift my hand, if I want I can bring it down, if I want I can walk, if I want I can sit, it's my will. But certain things, for example, the heart beating, it beats according to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I can't, if I want to stop my heart from beating, I cannot do it. For example, if I feel cold, I shiver. If I want to, I cannot stop it. It is the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah has given a free will to the human beings. That's the reason if a person does something evil or does a sin, he is responsible for it. And Allah has given the guidance in the Quran what is good and what is bad.